In Creole Parametric, you can use rips in sheet metal in order to make a part developable. In other words, in order to be able to flatten that part. Let's take a look at that. Right now I have a part that was created in standard mode. It's shelled out so it has a constant wall thickness. I can convert this to a sheet metal part. I will go to the Operations Overflow menu and then choose Convert to Sheet Metal. And from the dashboard, here it has the body to convert body one. Here it wants me to select my driving surface. I will pick this main surface in the model and tells me that the specified value in sheet metal thickness is different than the detected thickness in the geometry. Let's keep the model geometry. And so that way it uses that value over there and take a look at the part. Everything looks good over here. When I hit the check mark, I get this troubleshooter over here and it's giving me a warning about highlighted surfaces. But if I click the OK button, it'll still convert it to sheet metal and put me into sheet metal mode. Let's take a look at the flat pattern preview from the in graphics toolbar. And here it tells me that the preview is not available. I can't flatten this out as it is right now. Let's turn off the flat pattern preview. So in order to make this developable, uh, in other words, if in order to be able to flatten this out, I need to put some rips in here. Let's take a look at some of the different rip options. In this one, we're going to take a look at edge rips, surface rips, and sketched rips. Probably the most common one that I use is the edge rip. So let's go to the rip command and I'm going to open up the placement tab. Here's where you can select the different edge rip sets that you want and their references. So for example, let me select, uh, let's go and select this edge here. I'm going to use the shift key to get that one as well. That's good. I will then use the control key to select another edge over here and then use the shift key to just make sure I get that other part of the chain. Let's roll over and use the control key for this one. Again, shift to build up the chain that I want. Here you can see the chains are listed. And you can have multiple sets inside of here, and each set can have a different type of seam. Instead of the default open, you could use a blind gap in between here, or you could use just a single gap, single value, or you could choose overlap but I'm going to use the open option. And let's see for my last one, let's hold down the control key. And once again, use the shift key to grab the other edge that I want in there. So that is good for the edge rip. Now I will click the check mark and we can see the feature in the model tree. Let's try now unbending everything and everything is able to unbend. And the weird thing is, let me cancel out of here for a second. At the corners, I have curvature in two directions. If you have curvature in two directions, you can't flatten that, you know, regularly mathematically. But let's take a look at what happens in the unbend tool. So again, I select the unbend tool. It automatically selects the driving surface as what stays stationary. But if we go to the deformations, it automatically detected different de deformation surfaces in here. And as I move my mouse over each one, you can see them highlight in the graphics area, the four corners of the part there. Uh, you have some other different tabs in here. So for example, deformation control, this is where you can control for each one of those deformation areas, how it is handling it, and it is blending the boundaries. In other words, it's essentially flattening everything else and then filling in where the other geometry was. You could also use a rip area, which is similar to what I'm going, going to show next with the surface rip, and you could also use a sketch to drive it. But this is good, let's hit the check mark. And there we can see how it is flattened out. We have our different bend notes in there. If you don't want to see the bend notes, you can turn off the display of the bend notes from the annotation display dropdown or turn them back on. So that's good for the first one. Let's get rid of the edge rips in here. I'm going to right click and choose delete. 
and the unbend fails. Let's delete that one out of there as well. The next method that we're going to take a look at is using a surface rip. And the surface rip is just going to remove a surface from the model. So I could say, hey, you know what, this surface here with curvature in two directions, I'm just going to get rid of it. And here we can see the placement tab will list the individual surfaces. Now I'm holding down the control key and I'm going to select the other corners with curvature in two directions as well. So that's good. Let's hit the check mark out of here. And if I hit the unbend, still it doesn't know what to do in here because again, it's like we've got these joined up over here. So once again, let's cancel out of here and then you could throw in uh, some more edge rips. And so I'll choose edge rip and just choose one, hold down the control key, select the second one, hold down control and select that one there and select that one over there hit the check mark and now I can choose the unbend command and again it's able to flatten it out over there and you can see it just got rid of we don't have those uh, corners in there anymore so that's good for the second method let me hold down the control key and select the last three features here and delete them let's take a look at how to do a sketched rip so let's go to the rip drop down and I'll choose sketch ripped from over here. And first off, it wants to know what sketch I want to use. I can create the sketch right inside of here. I'm going to select this surface as what I want to rip. Let me hold down the right mouse button to activate the line tool. And I'm going to let it highlight the reference that I want to use and then sketch a line inside of here. That is good for the sketch. From the right mouse button, I can choose the check mark in order to get out of here. And it's highlighting the side over here. I always like to have it point to the side with the thicker material uh, over here for creating. And there's another direction for creating the cut, but this is what I want. Let's hit the check mark or the middle mouse button. And there we can see our edge in there because we actually have an edge rip in here now. I'm going to repeat that three more times. I'm going to do the same exact thing that I did here. So I'm just going to go through this very quickly. Okay, so I've got my rips in here. Once again, if I try to do an unbend, it's not going to work. It shows two of them unbending, but the rest of the model is unbent because we have those same problems here at the corner. So to solve those problems at the corners, let me make sure I cancel out of here instead of creating it, you can create either surface rips or edge rips again. So I can choose to do, let's do the easy surface rip first, holding down the control key, selecting those corners in there, hit the check mark, and if we try to unbend, there we go, we can create it in here and you can see how we have the flat rips in there. And by the way, I wouldn't really design a part like this, but I'm just doing this to show you how to use these different commands. Let's hit the check mark over there. So there we can see how it is unbent. Let's take a look at doing it with edge rips. I'm going to select the last two features here and delete them. All right, let's try doing this with edge rips. I'm going to go to the rip command and let's go to the placement tab. And this time I'm going to select this edge here. Let's hold down the control key and grab this one as well. Rotate around and let's control and grab this one and this one. So now we have all four of those edges. Let's hit the check mark. And now when we try to unbend it, there you can see what we're getting. Once again, if we go to deformations, you can see that we have the different corners as deformation areas inside of the unbend feature. And once again, with my unbend in here, if I want to get everything back to the fully formed state, I can put in a bend back feature, hit the check mark, 
and everything is in here. I prefer not to use flat pattern features because a flat pattern feature will leave your model in the fully bent state. And then if I wanted to be able to document the fully formed and fully flat states on a drawing, I prefer to use simplified representations. I can go over here, let's create a new simplified rep, and I'm going to call this fully flat, hit the enter key, and then I can choose features, and then exclude the bend back feature, hit done out of here, and that way I can use the fully flat simplified rep on a drawing, as well as the master rep, which shows the component in the fully formed state. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.